Oh, go ahead. Take it away. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get started right away because I've got wanted to give as much time on the demo side as like, I can. So uh, this is kind of fun stuff. I like it. Uh, so I'm gonna be talking about system orchestration with a software package called Ansible. Um, so one of the things I want to talk about is like if you if you have like just a small amount of boxes, like what kinds of things do you do to administrate? You know, to administer a smaller set of boxes. Most people just kind of do something like either go directly to the console or you use SSH. You're manually installing packages one by one or you know in small groups at a time, and then you kind of manually edit each config file because when you're only got like four boxes, it, it makes sense to kind of just deal with it. So what happens if you start scaling up and you have quite a few more boxes? Okay, well, then you start doing things like you're pretty much always going to be in SSH and you're kind of making scripts to kind of handle a lot of the heavy lifting for you. You might be listing all of your packages and files or starting kickstarts or something like that, to, you know, these general kind of half uh, automated things to get going. Um, and, and you know you still kind of are still manually touching different machines here and there, but for the most part they're all kind of run by these sorts of things. Now you start getting even bigger. Now what do you do? Quit. Scripts would still work, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What happens if you've got a few that are different? You're starting off from a different place. Your scripts are kind of meant to, like, as a, okay, I'm going to run these steps to get from point A to point B, but what you really care about is just the fact that you're at point B. What happens if you don't start at point A? What if you're starting at point C? What do you do then? So, essentially, if you're starting from a bunch of different points, <coughs> you have to either make your scripts really complex to try to deal with that, or you're doing a lot of manual work, which you can't really do at scale if you're having hundreds of machines. So what's the scale? M to potency. I do. I do. Sorry, thank you. I've, I've only read it. <laughs> so how do you define it? Uh, it is an unchanged in value following multiplication by itself. What? <laughs> uh, so the poor man's definition is after an initial change, you can read to the same action over and over again, and it will still hold the same result. So like the first time you run an action, you get your change, and then after that change, you can run that same action over and over again, and it, it works. Okay, so what? What does that gain us? It gets us to what is kind of called a stateful configuration, meaning you describe what you want the system to look like, and this function, or the idempotency potency, will, will then push you, the convergence model essentially will bring you to that state. You don't have to worry about how it gets there anymore. You just describe what you want, and the, the software takes care of it for you. So let's get to what we're actually talking about. So Ansible is a configuration management similar to, if, if anybody's familiar with like their competitors, they have things like, like Puppet, CF Engine, um, Chef, there's a couple others. That, that they're kind of out there that do these similar sorts of things in which you, you through their configuration management interface of whatever they decide they do, you describe how you, in some sort of descriptive language what you want the system to look like, and then you run, you run the software on them, and then it makes the changes to each individual machine to, to bring it into compliance. Ansible is, is an SSH-based one, so it's the only one I've found so far that doesn't require a client. So like, for example, Puppet requires that you have a Puppet server, and that each individual machine you want managed by Puppet has to have a client. Ansible only requires SSH and Python on the back end. Um, if you're running Python 1 point, or 2.4, you have to install one other package, but you can bootstrap that from Ansible even. It's, it's pretty neat. Um, so you only need, uh, it's, it's written in Python, it only needs Python on the back end, and um, the state in which, the way in which you describe states is written in YAML. So it's actually a really simple, easy to use language. You'll actually be able to understand it right here, right now. You don't have to learn it. Um, the other, the other thing that is different with Ansible compared to other configuration management tools is configuration management tools don't allow you to do ad hoc commands. Usually if you want to do something in Puppet, you've got to write it out in a manifest, they call them manifests, you write them out, you're configuring a manifest, and then you, you try to it's not even, you can't push it out, you have to just let it sit there and wait for everybody to pick it up. 
Um, but you can't run, like if you just want to know, hey, I want to know how many users are on this machine right now, you can't just figure that out with Puppet. You have to have a separate tool. But Ansible actually does both like a mass SSH tool so you can quickly run a command across thousands of machines all at once. And uh, it also is a push model. So what, what happens is you keep all your configs there, and then when you play it, it actually pushes out. So it's not you're not waiting for a client to come sweep up your changes. So you set up an inventory file that looks like this. I just pulled, lifted this example right off of their documentation. But you essentially, you, it's a, just an INI file. So you set up with, uh, well, the, in the brackets, you have your group label. And then um, each individual line underneath that is just a, a host that you want managed under that label. You can actually have multiple, you can have um, the same host listed in multiple um, groups. You can actually also combine groups together. Um, in this case, too, we, you see that you can actually define variables that you want to use later on in, in playbooks. They call, so if you're familiar with Puppet, Puppets manifest equals Ansible playbooks. That's just a term they use for comments, but you can store variables depending on, so the web servers, anybody who matches under web servers would have this variable associated with it. So that's kind of like the, the different things you can do there. We'll go into more detail of that during the, the demo. And then you have playbooks. These are how you describe what you want in the system. So you, with YAML, all of YAML starts with uh, the three hyphens at the very beginning of the file, and everything after that is kind of a, it's like a, it's similar to XML, but way easier to read. Um, but like in this case, you have yum, you can say, I want, I want uh, the packages listed here, and I want them to be installed. And so then what happens is when you run this playbook against the servers that, that match it, it'll say, okay, I'm gonna install the app server and the Acme software on this, this machine. Or actually, and then here's what the best part is, if the software is already installed, it doesn't do anything. It just sits there. Or it well, won't, doesn't sit there, we'll finish that part of it. This next one here will say like, I want the service with the name app underscore server, I want it to be running. And so if it goes to a server and it finds that it's not running, it'll change it so that it's running. If it's find that it already is running, it just moves on to the next step, which could just be finishing. So let's go like straight into a demo, because uh, the best part about this is like just seeing it work. So I'm gonna get started right here right away. One second. Is that a picture from your backyard? No. <laughs> So basically, you can get it from GitHub. It's a they, they do have packages out there for for certain servers, but like just because I wanted to show you guys some of the newer stuff, I went ahead and just pulled it straight from source. Um, what's cool is uh, it, so it comes with all these things. What's what's really neat about it is that you can you can you don't have to install from source the same way you used to. You didn't have to do like make install. You can do with Python. If anybody's familiar with Python development, you can do an environment setup. So you can actually just, uh, in this particular session, set up an environment. It sets up your environment variables. So if I do source, so if I go into the hacking and then environment setup, it's just a script that sets a bunch of my paths. So now Ansible will use, will, will go straight from this uh, this repository. So I'm going to be running the software straight from this, this, uh, this server. So I'm going to go. Can everybody see this okay? Am I, do I need to increase that at all or anything? Okay. Good. Just wanted to make sure. So one of the first things we're going to do is I just wanted to show you guys there's a ping module, which uh, is, it doesn't actually like ping it like the normal network ping, but what it does is it actually makes sure that it can actually log in, check the, the services, and then like returns a success if it, if it has it. So essentially just, it just returns Pong, essentially. So. Um, First off, what I'm going to show you here is the host file. This is actually my, I, I just branched off the one I actually use for work. So I, I created three virtual machines today at work just to kind of show you guys. And their names are just A, Lug, 1 through 3. Okay, so what's nice here is I, this is my label. I made a group called A, Lug. I can call this A, Lug servers or something, whatever I want to call it, right? 
So uh, what's nice too is that in the, in the host file you can either you can write them out um, one by one if you want, or you can use these uh, this this kind of notation gives you a range. So I know now that this is actually equivalent to if I just wrote a log one, a log two, oops, it might help to spell, a log three, right? The, the, these three lines right here is equivalent to this one line here. Is any relationship to an array declaration or? Uh, similar. Database object um, or something like that. It, it gets mapped in, when Ansible goes and reads it, it gets mapped into to basically, uh, I believe, an array. Uh, it, it expands it out in, and then puts it in through a, a Python list, I think. It's been a while since I looked at the source, so I can't, don't ask me for sure, but. Uh, so, but yeah, essentially you can do that. There's other things you can do too, so like, um, we'll go into it in a second, I'll show that in a second, but uh, I'll come back to it. So I wrote that, so like let's say I want to ping all the things. First off, I'm not going to run any playbooks, I'm just going to show you like what you can do ad hoc. So if you just type in Ansible, and then you give it a group name, so in this case we'll say a log, we said servers. Okay, so that's the group name. I'll say a module, so uh, it comes with certain modules that you can use. Um, we're going to use the ping module, um, which I should probably change my PS1 so it doesn't wrap over like that. Uh, and then I'm just going to hit enter because I'm not. There's no arguments that go with this one. So oh, now you can see these were brand new servers. I haven't done anything. So okay, so I can't log in. So what happens if I do that? If I say K, okay, that means ask for my password. So this is what's really cool is that. It's a scripting kind of thing, but it'll, it automatically does the expect stuff for you if anybody knows how to use that, so you don't have to worry about that. So now it'll ask me for the password. And hopefully I typed it in right. There you go. So what, it, what we've got here is, I'm gonna highlight. This right here is the output. It outputs in uh, JSON. Actually, what, what's happening here is this part here, right up to here, that's Ansible telling you that that host was a success. And then this part shows you the actual output from the command you ran. Does that make sense? So the output from each command is in JSON, and that's everything for it. So if you actually wanted to develop your own module, because you have this some crazy software that you want to write, as long as you can write it in any language you want, uh, as long as you're passing back and forth JSON, Ansible knows how to do it. You just got to pass the right things back and forth. Um, so uh, if I do, so let's do, let's do something now like let's get keys set up. So one of the nice things here is that I can say, um, then let's go into playbooks. So if I go in here, I go playbooks. And I look at my CentOS. I can, I'm basically saying, it's, oops, sorry. Install these packages, and I know I need to do this. This is my problem and then I'm running all these tasks. So what's also pretty neat is that I can include other playbooks or other lists of tasks. So if, let's say I know I'm going to be using, so like one of the things I use a lot is this firewall one because anytime I want to, this actually runs uh, and makes changes to the IP tables and then restarts it. So I use that a lot for a lot of other things. So if I know I want to configure the firewall thing, I can just include, the, just run the same exact line in all of my playbooks and then I know when I'm done running that playbook, the firewall will be configured for Did you set up this playbook, or was this pre-configured? I set this one up, yeah. There's plenty of, uh, of good uh, examples out there, and this this one, I've even pared this down. This is much bigger when I use it at work. Um, but it started out with just, just install these packages. That's what I started out with. Like, 20 minutes of using this thing, I already had value out of it, because I was trying to install packages on eight different servers at the same time, and I just went, install these packages, and I went, boom, and I was done, and like, 10 minutes, it was awesome. <laughs> um, so, uh, so if I run this, what's gonna happen here, so the, the one weird thing that I didn't like, but, but I've gotten used to is, there's, two, uh, there's actually two commands. There's Ansible, which is the one I just showed you, and then there's Ansible Playbook, which you actually use to run the playbook. So then I can uh, point it to the playbook I'll say K to ask for my uh, my password because I don't have any keys set up. 
Uh, wait, I'm actually going to... Isn't there a module to save the key? Sorry, what's that? Is there a module to deploy the key? Yes. Actually, that's what I was going to show you. So I forgot to show that in here. So if I go into tasks, one of my uh, frequently used tasks is uh, SSH keys. Um, and actually what I'm doing here is, this is a little more um, advanced after I did it. But the first way I did it, I just actually copied my public key into it. But what you do is, you can say, so the way this works too, I should go over this too. So you start, like most YAML, you start off with three hyphens at the top, and then uh, hash marks or pound signs or uh, comments. And then you start off with, I don't have the tasks here because this is always included as a task, but you would have a dash, oh, excuse me, um, you'd have a dash tasks, like that. That tells Ansible that, that you're, you're looking at uh, making a task. Then each task has to have a name. It actually technically doesn't, but it's good. It's your own self-documentation essentially. And then like that's actually what gets printed out when it's telling you what it's doing. It prints out the name. So it should be fairly descriptive on what you're doing. Then you say action and you give it the module. So authorized key here is a module. You're saying I want this key to be installed for the root user. And then you give it a key and a, you can quote the key and you can just paste the key in there. Or in this case, what I'm saying is I want you to take the item, uh, item is, a, is actually a special term, which you'll, you'll see in a second, and then I want you to open the file, cap the contents, and then that's what goes in the key. Does that make sense? So then what I'm doing here is with file blob is, a, is just a little way that you can do it. I essentially say, go into the resources folder, go into the SSH folder, and anything in there is a key, grab that, and then cat that out as a, as a SSH key. Does that make sense? So that's how you can do that. This this particular task is run inside my big uh, CentOS playbook. Oops. And that file is on the uh, server you're running. Correct. Yeah, these are all local. So I, I'm not oops. I'm not running any of this on a server. This is actually this laptop right here. So I'm, I am connected on my my VPN, but that's about it. So. Um, if I run Ansible's playbook, I'm going to say in playbooks, uh, CentOS. And because I don't have keys set up yet, I'm going to I'll ask for my password one more time. I'm going to run it. So the first thing it does is it gathers facts. For those that might be